Hey guys, it's Mrs. Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I wanted to show you my CAS publication, but I wanted to show you what prerequisites or what science classes I took for PA school. So if you are interested, keep watching. Um, I'm going to make a video right after this and it's going to be you looking at my CAS publication just so you can see the classes that I took. It was a question that I got a lot, basically what prerequisites should you take and what prerequisites I took for PA school. So this way you can see what prerequisites I took. So stay tuned. All right guys, so you are looking at my CASPA application. So this is my CASPA application. In fall 2010, that's when I started school, it was at San Antonio College. So it was a community college in San Antonio, Texas. The first class prerequisite I took was human anatomy and physiology and general psychology for some of the schools I applied to that was also a prerequisite. And then after that, I ended up taking human anatomy and physiology too, as you can see, during the summer. And then I also took general chemistry one and microbiology. So I took the wrong microbiology. I took it for allied health, science and health sciences. So I had to retake uh, the microbiolo microbiology, unfortunately, just for regular biology sciences. So that's why if you see that class, it pops up twice on my transcripts. So here I'm just, I just added a few schools just to show you how the prerequisites look that are required for PA school. And as you can see, uh, for this community college, I had taken human anatomy and psychology, which were counted towards the prerequisites. And as you can see also, the prerequisites tend to differ between schools. Um, for example, the University of Texas Medical Branch at Galveston does require immunology and virology, and I did not take immunology or virology, so I ended up not applying to that school neither of the two times that I applied. So I just wanted to give you an example and that's why I added it here. Microbiology, like I said, the one I had taken was not accepted by the PA school, so I had to retake the proper microbiology, which was the microbiology for science majors. Basically, it's a little bit harder than the regular microbiology for allied sciences. And here I'm just going through a few more classes. Psychology, usually I just put my general psychology since I had gotten an A in that class. And also for Arizona, I didn't end up applying to that school either because I hadn't taken medical terminology since it was required for that program. So once again, before you apply to schools, make sure that you verify and make sure that you have all the classes and prerequisites you need before you apply. And the next school I'm going through is going to be another community college. So most of my undergraduate I did in community colleges. Um, as you can see, I did my biology 1 and 2. You can see my grades there. And you can also see C's that I got. I got several C's as an undergrad. And I actually made another YouTube video about that. But thankfully, I was still accepted to PA school. And for general physics, one, I got a C and I ended up retaking that spring 2015 because I wanted to get an A. And I was able to take that A, get that A and be able to increase my GPA. And I was able to substitute that class for some of the schools that required physics. Now, there's not a lot of PA schools that require physics as prerequisites, but I took it because it was part of my degree plan. And as you can see, I attended several community colleges. I tried to save as much money as I could before I started paying university level schools. So this is why you're seeing a lot of community colleges. At this one specifically, I took statistical methods, psychology. Um, although some of the schools did require statistics, they didn't specify what type of statistics. So since I got a better grade in uh, psychology st statistics, statistical methods for psychology, I actually placed that class as my statistics prerequisite rather than the regular statistics class since I had gotten a B in that class. So finally, the next school is going to be Texas A&M University where I got my bachelor's degree from. And as you can see, the first few classes, genetics, I got a C in that class. Um, so that was one of my C's. And then you can see my organic chemistry classes. Organic chemistry one, I also got a C. And organic, organic chemistry too, I got to see also. So organic chemistry was definitely one of my weak points. 
Um, and I minored in psychology, so I had a lot of psychology classes. And thankfully, these classes increased my GPA, thankfully. And finally, I took also biochemistry one. Um, I got an A in this class, thankfully. And I know not all schools require biochemistry, but it was required for my degree plan. And for some schools, you're able to substitute your OCHEM for biochemistry class, or else they'll accept either one. So that's why I think it's really important to have OCHEM 1 and 2 and biochem. Um, that way you can substitute either or. So as you can see, for example, some schools are specific, like Arizona School of Health Sciences, that they require the organic chemistry. All right, guys, so these are just my classes, the prerequisites. You can see my grades, and I hope this video was helpful. And as always, if you guys like my videos, make sure you give them a thumbs up or subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.